All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for attending this meeting of the Planning Committee. Um, for those of you, you who don't know me, my name is Council... K my, my name's Caleb Tomlinson, actually. And I'm the councillor for Bambridge West, and I am also the chair of the committee. Uh, committee members and members of the public are reminded that this meeting is being live streamed to YouTube, so let's treat each other with the respect we all deserve, yeah? Okay. Uh, if you're attending the meeting because you're a member of the public who has registered to speak, please note you have a time limit of four minutes. You will be timed and I will confirm when four minutes runs out. Uh, please come forward to the microphone here, press the speak button, introduce yourself and begin your presentation. Uh, voting will be undertaken using the electronic system. The outcome of the vote will then be confirmed by our legal officer, Taz, once it's complete. Uh, I'll begin with some housekeeping. Please, can you make sure your mobile phones are on silent? Um, we're not anticipating a fire drill this evening, but if the alarm goes off, you should leave by the fire exits which we are behind you, and we'll meet on the grassy verge on West Paddock. So if I can now ask everyone to introduce themselves and we will start with the young lady on my left. Good evening. My name's Tasneem Saftar. I'm the Legal Services Team Leader. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Councillor Maldon. you representing Seven Stars, Ward and Vice Chair of the Committee. Uh, ben Storey, Democratic Service Officer. Councillor Caroline Moon. I represent the Ward of Buckshaw and Worden. Councillor Chloe Hunter, Bamber Ridge East. Councillor Gareth Watson, Count Green, Gregson Lane. Chris Lomax, Walter Dale East. Councillor Damien Breverton, Walton Liddell West. Good evening, Councillor Harry Hancock, Broad Oak Ward, Permilham. Good evening, Councillor Barry Yates, Sandsbury and Walters. Good evening, Councillor Will Adams, and I represent Middlefith in Permilham. Good evening all, Councillor John Hesketh, I represent Longton and Hutton West. Good evening, Councillor Colin Sharp was representing Ernst Bridge Ward and I'm standing in this evening for Councillor James Flannery. Good evening, I'm Councillor Mary Green uh, representing Moss Side and Ridge Hall. Good evening, Debbie Roberts, Development Management Team Leader. Good evening, Janice Croke, Planning Officer. Good evening, Stephen Brown, Planning Manager. Good evening, I'm John Harrison. I'm the Interim Director of Planning and Development. OK, welcome one and all. And I'd like to welcome John Harrison to his first meeting. And I hope you have a very happy stay with South Ripple Council, John. Thank you, Jim. OK, Ben, do we have apologies for absence? Uh, yes, Chair, we have two. So we've got Councillor Phil Smith, who's been substituted by Councillor Damien Bretherton, and Councillor James Flannery, who's been substitu substituted by uh, Councillor Colin Sharples. All right, thanks for that. Do we have any declarations of interest? Councillor Watson. Uh, yes, uh, on item eight, uh, uh, basically prejudicial, a little prejudicial interest. So I'll be leaving the meeting for that particular item. Councillor Yates. Uh, Council 8, uh, sorry, item number 8, non-pecuniary, um, application number 9, pecuniary interest, which I'll leave the room. All right, thanks for that, everyone. Um, I have read, uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Bretherton. Yeah, hi, I've just got a personal interest, uh, item 10 and 11, uh, in that I just know the applicant. Yeah, it's not pecuniary, it's not prejudicial, and you'll be able to stay in the meeting and vote, OK? Um, right, I've read the minutes of the last meeting. Um, we can't be unanimous because we weren't all here, so we, are, we will have to go to the electronic vote. Um, if, you weren't, if you weren't here, you just need to abstain. OK, do I have a seconder? Yes, Chair, Thank I'll you. second them. Oh, thanks, you. Councillor Donoghue yeah. and Councillor Watson, both at the same time.
Hey, Taz, can you uh, give us the result of that, please? Thank you, Chair. So the minutes of the meeting have been approved. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, OK, appeal decisions. Uh, Stephen Brown, please. Yes, Chair, we've got one appeal to note tonight. It relates to Hilton's Farm 2 Jane Lane off Long Meanigate in Leyland, which is a site within the Greenbelt. This appeal was heard at a two-day public inquiry and it related to an enforcement notice. There had been a material change of use of land and buildings to a mixed use of agriculture, agricultural engineering, general engineering, and the fabrication of agricultural buildings with associated storage. This had followed an earlier unsuccessful appeal where the appellant had claimed the use was lawful by virtue of time, i.e. it had existed for 10 years. This further um, inquiry was the inspector dismissed the appeal and somewhat discredited their evidence in terms of the 10-year uh, claims. Uh, so the appellant is required to re remove the buildings and materials from the land and cease the use. In making the judgment, a full, of, full award of costs was given in our favour. So a, a good result, Chair, all round. Thank you. OK, thanks for that, Stephen. Um, right, item number six on this evening's agenda. Uh, Debbie, if you can give us an update on this, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got an application on the agenda for Gables Farm at Linda Lane in Hutton. Uh, we've been working to, with the applicant, we've recommended approval, but on the last minute we've had some issues in terms of the noise report. Um, we've had a, we've had a second assessment of the report, tightened it a little bit more and put some conditions together, which we put on an update sheet that you probably have seen. But the applicant is, is concerned that the, it makes for an unviable business. She's asked for the application to be deferred until the next committee and our noise assessor and her noise assessor are working to try and come up with a feasible option that works for all parties. So we'd ask for it to be deferred if possible. Thank you, Chair. OK, so um, we need to vote on this for deferral if everybody's happy with that. In fact, is anybody unhappy with it? Everybody happy with the deferral on this one? Can I have a proposer? Councillor Watson, Councillor Adams seconded. Taz, are we happy with that? Vote. Thank you, Chair, can we please vote on the actual deferral? Deferral, please. Can we just have a, have a show of hands rather than Ben getting it up and down like a jack in the box? Okay, Taz, you've just had the vote. Thank you, Chair. So the matter has been now deferred to the next committee. Thank you. Okay, moving swiftly on to item number seven, the former Lostock Hall Primary School site, Avondale Drive, Lostock Hall. This was deferred from October. And Debbie, if you could um, present the, the item... Thank you, Chair. It's not gotten to where I wanted. Hang on. Right. Um, the site itself is 1.5 hectare former Lost Call Primary School site on Avondale Drive in Lost Call. To the west, we've got Avondale Drive with existing and proposed access from around here. I'll show you that in a second. We've got St James's Church and Community Centre in the southwest corner and semi-mature trees along this boundary. None of them are protected. In the north, we've got the rear of properties on Brown Edge Road. They're well screened. And in the east and south, we've got Moss Lane, Moss and Wilkinson Streets. The site's open, but it's secured by former school fencing. And the whole site is allocated by policy D1 as housing land. Um, it's some distance from Tardigate Air Quality Management Area. And the Environment Agency have allocated it as flood zone one, so least likely to flood. The proposal before you is for 52 storey apartment terrace semi detached dwellings with associated infrastructure. They're all affordable. And primary access will be on from the western side on Avondale Drive, but 19 of the units on Avondale Drive and on Wink Wilkinson Street would have their own private access. There's also pedestrian access on Wilkinson Street as well. 
um, off-road park into adopted standards and there is relevant waste storage and charging points identified for private and communal areas. It's a similar density to the fairly built up residential locale that it sits in. Um, density was questioned at last meeting, but the policy is clear that the 30 unit that's noted on the policy is neither a minimum or a maximum. It's a starting point and that negotiable stance has passed the assessment for the local plan through examination. Following residents' concerns, we also the applicant has also moved the apartments from the rear of property as on Wilkinson Street. They still appear as semi-detached properties, but they are now dwellings, uh, single house dwellings. Um, now they're further away from the properties on Wilkinson Street. They're slightly narrower, and they have more of a landscape buffer between them. The remain policy compliant in separation terms, and all the member concerns in that respect have been fully addressed. We've got six complementary house types as per the submitted materials plan. Um, apartments comprise upstairs and downstairs properties. And as I said earlier, they resemble semi-detached dwellings. They're no higher than any of the other units. This visual shows the street scene from the proposed access, the public open space and a play area that I'll, describe, I'll go into in a second. It's not the best plan on screen, but in terms of landscaping, we've got public open space in the northwest corner. Um, following requests from members, we've all the applicants also included a lap, a local area for play, which is a bit, little bit more usable than the the open space we had before. The lap's fenced; it's got a couple of benches in, but it's aimed at the under six age group, so it's more low key than a traditional play area, um, less noisy, I would imagine. There are trees on site and most are going to be retained, but there's a 31 tree replacement scheme, which our arborist is happy with. Add that to the site landscaping and the garden sizes, garden landscaping, and it, it retains a relatively green feel, but it reflects that of the wider built up area. Just some photographs of the site now. We've got a site from Avondale Drive, which is a south west corner and Moss Lane. It's a secure open site, um, part hard standing, part former school fields. The site from Moss Lane in the south with Avondale Drive on the left. <coughs> Excuse me. And Moss Lane in the south viewed from Wilkinson Street. On this one, we've got Moss Lane in the south and Moss Street in the east viewed from Avondale Drive across the site. As you can see, the former school buildings have all been taken away. It's majority hard standing or rubble now. And Avondale Drive view from Wilkinson Street. And finally, the boundary of properties on Brown Edge Road, which are behind these, uh, these mature trees, are very well screened on the northern edge. <clears throat> At the last committee, despite there not being any statutory objections, members had some concerns about drainage. Um, as such, the council agreed for WSP, an independent drainage consultant, to assess the drainage proposals, sort of a critical friend assessment is the way we've put it. WSP's full comments are in the report and the update sheet, but in summary, they see no reason why we should doubt the LLFA or the U or UU and that the findings that the drainage proposals are acceptable subject to conditions proposed by the LLFA and UU should be accepted. The applicant otherwise has addressed all the other issues raised by members and officers are satisfied that where possible changes have been achieved. Site delivers 100% affordable housing and in design terms respects the character of the area with similar density to its surroundings. No statutory objections and we're satisfied that it's policy compliant on an allocated housing site which is past examination and includes a presumption towards housing development. On that basis, we would go for approval with conditions, um, decision to be delegated to the Director of Planning and Housing in consultation with the Chair and Vice Chair upon completion of a legal agreement to secure public open space and affordable housing. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks for your detailed presentation, Debbie. I'm presuming that the 
applicant has actually communicated with the residents because there were a lot of year last time and we were all objecting to it. And I haven't got any registered registered objectors tonight. Yeah, of course you can. Can I just add, add, I beg your pardon, I forgot to add, the residents have met with uh, ward members, I believe, and with the applicant, um, sat down, worked out what they want, and in fairness, a lot of the requests and a lot of the things that were asked for by members last time have been added to these schemes. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks for your help, Abby. Just goes to show that deferrals sometimes work. Councillor Jackie Mort. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, Members. Um, since the deferral of this application at the last planning committee in October... Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. I certainly can, Council Mark. Thank you. Um, a meeting has taken place with West Church Homes, myself and residents who spoke against the application. Their main concerns was the possibility of flooding problems increasing in the Maureen Avenue, Marilyn Avenue and Prospect Avenue areas. This has been a historical issue for several years. Although there is no remit to fix any existing problems, West Church Homes have been more than willing to support the residents by appointing an independent drain consultant to investigate. This investigation took place on November the 4th and the drains were cleaned and jetted and CCTV was used for investigation. A full and very comprehensive technical report from the independent consultant, complete with photographs, was supplied to ward councillors and to the residents. This report also highlighted the possible cause of the existing flooding issues coming from the United Utilities adopted sewer. Other possible amendments to the revised version that you have tonight including, included relocation of the apartments to allow visible improvement for properties in Wilkinson Street and a grassed play area with railings and benches for the younger children. These are two very important issues that residents were concerned about. Unfortunately, the residents who came to speak at the last committee meeting are unavailable tonight, but they have asked me to thank West Church Homes for listening, for being proactive and for the positive results which have achieved. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much for your presentation, Councillor. But it's great when ward members come to speak to committee. Okay, I have the agent, the applicant, or is it, I think it's the agent, Jane Aspinall and Paul Sinclair. Are you the agents or the applicants? The applicants, right, okay. Thank you, Chair. My name's Jane Aspinall. I'm the internal planner at West Church Homes, and I wasn't actually present at the last meeting. Our planning consultant presented to you, and she's here this evening. But following the comments and the strength of feeling, um, which were shown by members last time, the, we just wanted to come here ourselves to say the wider team took it very, very seriously. And over the last eight weeks, we've resulted in the revised drawings, which are before you for consideration tonight. I'd just like to pass on our thanks as well for the constructive way that your planning team and drainage officer has worked with us during this time. And I hope that you now feel comfortable enough to support our planning application. Uh, Paul is our technical director and he's more than willing to answer any detailed questions on drainage or any other technical issue you might still have outstanding. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Jane. Just before they go and sit down, does anybody have any technical questions they wish to ask? No? Okay, thanks for your presentation. <laughs> Councillor Moon, are you waving at me? Or do you want to speak? Uh, Councillor Moon, we are open to committee now, Councillor Moon. 
it's trying to be proactive chair um <laughs> i am more than happy now to move approval of the application i think i can't let this moment pass without saying that if only we could do this in the first place it would be much better for everybody the level of upset that's caused often for residents and you think it's clearly possible we deferred an application and the conversations have been possible so that would be my only thing let's all just try and do it in the first place but i'm more than happy to move approval Okay, thanks, Councillor Moon. Councillor Mrs Green. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just a bit of clarification, really, from the officers, if I could have it. It's saying in here on page 31 that 19 properties would have private access from either Avondale or Wilkinson Street. Um, where would the other 30 access the site? All the properties... Sorry, through you, Chair. Yes. All the properties apart from the 19 independent will come off Avondale Drive into right. the T-shape that I showed you on the on the screen. Mm. Sorry, it's yes. on the screen, Councillor. Yes. Um, and they will come off the estate road. Right, OK. And when you say private access, you mean in they have a drive in from individual, individual property? Drives, yeah. Right. Yeah. And the other thing is, is still not clear there's been any changes on the issue that I... Um, queried last time actually I was a bit concerned about the entrance into Avondale Drive from Moss Lane where the churches and the small industrial area is it's a very tight corner into Avondale Drive have there been any sort of plans for any improvement of widening that corner or anything sure the thank you Beg your pardon, councillor. I've, I've not mentioned that ever. Um, on this bottom corner. Yeah, that's the one that I mean. Yeah. You can see where the curb is. Yeah. That's been altered. Right. And Lancashire County Council are happy with that. They're they're very supportive of that um, mm. corner. Mm. It's part of the request that they asked last time, which mm. would have been a condition, but they've dealt with it, right. and everybody's satisfied right. with that now. Well, sorry, sorry about that. I should have mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Hesketh. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, I actually was one of the defer well, commented on deferral last time, but I think the concerns that I had in connection with it last time, and the main one was flooding and so forth, but this seems to have been uh, sorted out and uh, it, it accords now with our local plan. I think we, we should uh, go along with the uh, development, sir. And uh, I think it's a bonus, too, to have affordable housing and so forth on this site. I think we should welcome it, and uh, I will support it, Mr Chairman. OK, thanks, Councillor Halsketh, Councillor Adams, and then Councillor Lomax. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, it's, it's positive to, to hear when we do defer for the applicant to come back and actually uh, make the changes uh, that residents and members have asked for. Um, so... Thank you for, to the applicant um, for doing that. I think the scheme is much better, much more improved. Uh, and as I say, <clears throat> excuse me, on the back of the comments that were made, it does seem like some action has been done. And I think with what Councillor Mort said in terms of the residents now asking her to approve uh, the application on, on their behalf um, says a lot. So, so um, I would like just to say, though, that... Um, and put it on record that the conduct of Mr Topham last time after the meeting um, was very disappointing and very disrespectful. Um, but if you could please pass those comments on to him. Um, I thank you for your work uh, in working with the residents. That's what this is all about. So thank you. Well said, Councillor Adams. Councillor Lomax. <laughs> I'm unsure whether anyone here has seconded this I will second it because I thank you uh, for the work that you've undertaken. Um, I have listened to residents down there from the start, and of course they were extremely worried. Uh, what you've done is fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Lomax. And for clarity, Councillor Moon proposed. Councillor Hesketh seconded. Right. If nobody's anything else to say, do we have any more proposals? Okay, so we've had a proposal for approval, Councillor Moon, a seconder, Councillor Hesketh. We will now go to the electronic vote.
Okay, Taz, if you can give us uh, the results of that one. Thank you, Chair. So in respect of the development to erect <coughs> residential units with access parking, open space and landscape infrastructure, um, committee has unanimously uh, minded to approve the application and that the decision is delegated to the Chair, Director of Planning and Housing in consultation with Chair and Vice Chair of the Planning Committee upon successful completion of a legal agreement to secure a financial contribution towards public open space and on-site affordable housing. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks for that, Taz. If you've just come for item seven, if you if you want to stay for the rest of the meeting, you are quite welcome, but I'm sure you don't. You've got better things to do. Um, so we will now move on to agenda item number eight, which is uh, Gregson Lane Community Centre. And I would like to invite Debbie once again to present Thank you, this Chair. one. Gregson Lane Community Centre is a small community building within a large site. It has adjacent parking and it's accessed off Gregson Lane itself. Um, there are storage containers and changing rooms which line the southern boundary and houses beyond those. In the north and west, there are playing fields screened by mature hedgerows and there are houses beyond. And in the east, there is a small children's play park and houses on Arrowsmith Drive. Commercial and residential properties span the access from Gregson Lane. The proposal is for a new community centre following demolition of the existing. It's 21 metres by 12 metres with a flat roof, which is lower than the existing one, and it will be completed in grey and timber cladding, uh, grey and cedar cladding, I should say. Um, it will be community use and private venues or rental for private functions and fully accessible, which the existing one isn't. Opening and licensing hours aren't expected to change. They'll remain as they are. Okay, we this is the existing building. Um, as you can see, it's a bit untidy. It's, it has an asbestos problem and it isn't fully accessible. Um, the front face is a car park. It's only a small car park. And there is a playing field behind me when I'm taking the photograph on the car park, if you will. The side faces the cricket pitches. The top photograph is the rear elevation and the bottom one is the play area, which is immediately behind it. There are houses on Arrowsmith Drive behind, so they're quite a way away. And the top left of this one is the side elevation facing Gregson Lane properties. The other three are the properties themselves. As you can see, they're well screened and they've got uh, a decent amount of separation. The proposed building is a very similar elevation, all obscurely glazed, but with a flat roof, so it will be lower, the impact will be less. We've had two letters of support and two in objection, and they're in your report, with no statutory objection and uh, subject to conditions, and it is in the existing built-up area, so there is a principle towards development subject to all matters being acceptable. On that basis, we, it's policy compliant and we would recommend approval with conditions. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks for that presentation, Debbie. Councillor Lomax, you want to come in? Yeah, I would. Um, well, it gives me great pleasure that this has come forward and I would propose this straight, along, straight away. It's been a long time coming. People have worked hard for it. Yeah, let's just get on and get it built. OK, thanks. Thanks for that, Councillor Lomax. Councillor Hunter? Yeah, I'll second, well, I'm seconding Chris and I'm seconding what he says as well. It's very good. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor Yates? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, this has been waiting for for a long, long time. Um, it's going to be an excellent building for the community. Um, the Gregson Lane and Carp Green um, fundraising group have worked out very hard for years to to get this built and thankfully for for the extra cash that's been put forward it will be going up i have to, uh, to at this stage I, I, in seconding it i would like to say um on behalf of the of gareth who's the local councillor for the area um i'm sure um the committee and the residents of that area and thank Gareth for all his lobbying that he's done and the hard work he's put into it. Uh, I am the county councillor for that area. Um, 
I've been to all the events and watched it closely, what's been going on. And everybody in the community will uh, be overjoyed when this application is passed, hopefully. <coughs> Mr Chairman, thank you. OK, thanks, Councillor Yates. For clarity, it has already been seconded by Councillor Hunter. Uh, Councillor Adams. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, this is a real positive scheme um, and something that I'll be delighted to support. I, I was actually uh, using the facilities in the summer um, when I uh, knocked off the winning runs uh, when I was playing cricket there. Um, <laughs> I just I just thought I'd get that on a public meeting. Sorry, Chair. Um, but no, there's a really positive uh, positive um, application. Um, I think it's 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 great that the council have um, financially supported the group as well, uh, and I know that it will be a great asset to that community um, and one that I think will uh, will be used by many. So I'm very happy to support it. Thank you. Okay, so do we have any members of the council, Hesketh? It's just a comment, Mr. Chairman. It's a good facility, uh, and I'm uh, glad to support it, but. Uh, it, it is twofold, this particular application, because it does get rid of asbestos, which, yeah. you know, it's what we're trying to do, isn't it? Thank you. OK, thanks, Councillor Hesketh. Um, right, let me get to the point. Is anybody against this application? I'll ask for legal advice then. Could we do this on a show of hands or do we have to do it electronically, Taz? Show of hands will be fine, Chair. OK, ladies and gentlemen, all in favour? Thank you, Chair. So, in respect of the erection of new community centre following demolition of existing and associated works, uh, committee has decided to grant planning permission um, with conditions which are stipulated in the update report. Thank you. Thanks very much, Taz. What a great application. What a great application. Okay, moving swiftly on to item number nine. This is Danesway, 52 Hall Lane, Longton. And happily for me, um, Janice is going to present this minus her Christmas jumper. Over to you, Janice. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, so this application relates to land associated with Danesway, which is 52 Hall Lane in Longton. The site consists of a residential curtilage, which has a number of outbuildings, garage workshops, stables, games room, and areas of hard standing, all used as ancillary buildings to the residential dwelling. Neighbouring properties lie to the east and west along Hall Lane, together with a small residential development known as the Oak Gardens. The site's within the green belt, but is previously developed land, which is explained at section 8.1 of the committee report, and the site does benefit from outline planning permission. So this reserve matters application seeks approval for the means of access, the appearance, layout, scale and landscaping for a development of two detached dwellings following the outline approval. So access is taken from the existing access off Hall Lane, which will be upgraded. County highways have no objection and consider the proposal will have no impact on highway safety and capacity. Uh, two parking spaces are provided by the way, a way of a carport to each property and then there's some additional parking to the north which you can see annotated on the plan. So this just shows the access arrangement and sight lines. The proposal utilises the existing access and that will be finished in hard surfacing for five metres into the site as required by county highways. And access and highway matters are reported at section 8.2 of the report. So in terms of the layout, the proposed dwellings will be sited adjacent to each other. The location of plot two has moved within the site since it was first submitted in order to achieve all the normally required spatial separation distances. So that's between 10 and 13.8 metre long rear garden, 
30 metres between the two plots and 30 metres plus to the rear of the neighbouring property itself. So the dwellings will be two-storey in scale and of a modern design with flat roofs and finished in a mix of white and grey render. That just demonstrates the proposed elevations. Um, each dwelling will have a living and family room, kitchen, dining at ground floor and four bedrooms at first floor. As originally submitted, balconies were proposed over the carports to each dwelling, but these have since been removed. So in terms of landscaping, there'll be some additional planting provided to the southern boundary with the neighbouring property in the form of shrubs and trees to provide some additional screening. So this area of aerial view just shows the site in context with neighbouring properties, which I've indicated. Um, in terms of residential amenity, Plot 2 will be located to the rear of Shoreline which is a detached bungalow with rear extension. And as previously, previously indicated, the garden will be between 10 and 13 metres to the boundary and it will be 30 plus metres to the dwelling itself. So to the west there are glass houses associated with the property sunny side. To the east is an industrial type building associated with Beverly House. So a number of objections have been received to this application, including its impact on residential amenity, the character and appearance of the dwellings. But the plans have been amended to help address these concerns and the proposal complies with relevant policies in the local plan and is considered to have no undue impact on neighbouring properties. Finally, the site is a previously developed site within the green belt where redevelopment is permitted. The proposals are considered acceptable and in accordance with green belt policies. Additionally, the land to the north will be returned to green fields following removal of, out, of outbuildings and this plan just shows the extent of the land and therefore the proposal is considered to have some planning gain by removing built development benefiting its openness. So the application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks for your presentation, Janice. Um, we have some registered speakers on this item this evening. Uh, we have three objectors. Um, we will start with uh, Quentin Kemp, please. Good evening, Mr Kemp. Uh, press the speak button and you will have four minutes, okay? Uh, uh, my objection, the first one, is actually the access. Um, where they say it's uh, the LCC is quite happy with it and the, the hedge should be at a metre. The hedge has never been a metre, it's always been 1.5 metres. And at the end of that hedge is a telegraph pole, which is in the line of sight. And it's 30 metres, and that's probably never going to go anywhere. Um, I would suggest if they wanted to put a driveway in, the original outline plans showed that the the um, driveway was giving us sort of between 600 and a metre down the length of our fence so maintenance could be carried out to the fence and the hedge that's there because otherwise if anybody's doing any maintenance and somebody comes around the corner they're never going to see them uh, and the original it was driveway was a lot sort of like moved over slightly and then came in which would be preferable to having it straight down the side of our fence all the way down to the bottom. Um, because on the other side, to the left hand of the driveway, the hedge there must be 1.6 to 1.8 metres high. It's about two metres thick. And it's actually further out than the hedge between number 50 and number 52, which with the line of sight is actually worse on that side than it would be ours as is existing. And another point I've got to make is um, the proposed screening trees and shrubberies. Uh, the ones they've put in are sort of uh, five litre pots, which are probably only about four feet, five feet high. By the time they get to maturity, you're talking at least 10 to 15 years before they would give any decent screening. It would be a much better idea 
if they actually put in a lot bigger and mature trees to give it an in more instant cover and screening from um, what we have. I think my wife's going to talk on the other subjects. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thanks. That. Thanks for that, uh, Mr. Kemp. <laughs> okay. Do we have a uh, Julie Kemp? Hi, Julie. If you press the speak button, and you have four minutes. Okay. Hello. I'm here um, as um, resident of Shordine with my husband Quentin and also I'm speaking for um, Mr Rob Rosio who's um, of uh, number 48 Slovenian as well. Um, so objection really for us is that we've seen an increase in footprint of um, from the proposed initial drawings for the, the properties which had no obje objections back in 2019. We have seen an increase more or less looks like 50% um, it's over the footprint of the existing buildings that, that are there, which are um, buildings are not substantial and they're in the green belt. So they're made of wood, some brick, but they're not substantial buildings. And I was I wasn't sure if it was again South Ribble planning policy to actually oversize um, any ex any new buildings that's um, bigger than the existing buildings. Uh, I'm not sure of that, but that was just something I just wanted to raise as well. Um, the application um, south facing upper windows propose a, a full length glass material to be obscure um, and we're suggesting that these are full length, this is the back bedrooms which are all overlooking our properties of, of Sylviana and Shordean. Um, they are that even though we've got the distance there, you know, we are a bungalow and they are full screens from, you know, so and the back bedrooms, we can't understand why they can't be either made up of obscure glass if they need to have that full length or actually to be reduced to size to a, no, a normal, um, you know, um, sensitive build um, that we've been hearing about earlier on um, on, on um, Agenda 6. Um, so we do feel that they're overlooking and intrusive. Um, I'd like to just bring um, in on the east facing elevation windows that are overlooking um, the properties of Beverly House and Sunnyside. Um, these are, are um, you know, sort of bathroom windows or gym windows that may, that uh, I think they were proposed. Um, they're overlooking sheds as um, Janice has already mentioned, and also greenhouses. So they have no um, overlooking or any intrusiveness of, of those neighbours of Beverly House or Sunnyside. And as this is just a, a planning application, I can't really understand why um, we have not been consulted really by Mr and Mrs Howe and their developers as to actually change that so that we have those obscure um, bathroom windows facing our properties and the big screen bath, um, um, bedroom windows could be facing uh, potentially just greenhouses and and um, agricultural or, or sheds um, that, that they are. Um, there's an opportunity here for the developer to actually work with us and, and, and make it a bit more sensitive um, on that on that side. Um, I'm also concerned as well that we haven't had any measurements of one of the properties which is still has uh, an element of overlooking Shordean um, in particular. Um, and I question why that hasn't been. There's been measurements for property two, but not for property one. And I question that. I also question as well if the site has actually been measured for two of these large executive homes. Uh, we do have over um, electric over power cables that run at the back of Dean's Way. It runs across all the way um, of, of that unadopted area of, of um, Hall Lane. Um, we do have um, planning application that has been approved for number um, 57, which is Bransfield. Um, then those houses are being built. They were planning application for two buildings. Now, um, they have done a very sensitive, very beautiful design, but the second property cannot be built at current time, even though the planning application, and that is purely for the overhead electrical cables. So I do question that that site has not been properly measured. Um, Julie, oh, you've had you've had oh, four minutes. I, um, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, if, if, if committee are happy, are you? Uh, I've only got a couple more. Committee. 
be honest. Yeah, I'll be li- I'll be lenient if you, if you if you can just. Um, Thank you. You're so kind. So I just wanted to bring as well that houses on Hall Lane have more in common with each other than differences. That is actually added in gender um, item number nine. For example, the majority are of red brick and they are of, of, of pitch slate roof construction, none with a flat roof at all, none with contemporary design. Therefore, these dwellings will stick out like a sore thumb and definitely out of keeping of the style of properties in Hall Lane. They will only as well, they won't, the only people that the, ob- the obscure of these buildings will be short dean which are not obscured from us as residents Savian, which is not obscured from them um also across the way because it's only a, a single track unadopted road um myrtle cottage will also see those houses so they're not obscured from from sight of them and also number 49 to 51 which are terraces will not be obscured by them unless it's a um uh, planting uh, uh, planting of um, of trees that can obscure that and finally um uh, I think actually that is is probably th- this property was up for sale as well also in June of this year it didn't get it did get the asking price it got over the asking price um it's a second property for Mr and Mrs Howe and they do plan to move to Skipton so it is just really for them to to get this planning permission in uh, and move quickly uh, with a good price so thank you very much for your for your time. Okay, thanks, Julie. Uh, Janice, have you got anything you'd like to? Yeah, thank you, Chair. So the the access is an existing access which is just being upgraded. So there's there's no objection from county highways. Obviously, they they've been to site. Um, you know, the I um I took up with them about the hedge, and they said regardless of whether the hedge is reduced in height, you know, they won't object on highway grounds, highway safety grounds. Uh, they just ask for a few conditions put in. Um, mentioned the, the increase in footprints. Well, the outline application was just outlined. They didn't apply for anything, access or anything. So that plan that was put in and the outline application was just purely indicative to show that two d- dwellings could be accommodated. So there was nothing agreed at that stage, although the outline is the actual planning permission and establishes the principle of development. Um, regarding the windows and overlooking, as I've mentioned in the report and again in my presentation, it meets all our normally required spatial separation distances which are tried and tested, um, they're contained in our residential extensions SPD. So we normally require 21 metres between first floor facing windows. In this case, to the property affected Shodine, there's I think it was 34 and a half, it was over 30 metres, so that's well in excess of our normally required distances. The plot was moved, plot two was moved because it had less than 10 metre rear garden. Uh, that wasn't the issue with plot one. It was only plot two that, that didn't achieve that. So that's why the, that's the only one that's been mentioned. Um, and the power cables, yeah, you mentioned about power cables. Those are shown on the plan. They are indicated and they're not in the developable, developable area. Thank you, Chair. All right, thanks for your help with that, Janice. Uh, do we have a Peter Smith wishing to object? Okay, Peter, um, you will have actually four minutes on this one, okay? Good evening, Chair. Good evening, councillors, planners, ladies and gentlemen. Peter Smith from Hall Lane in Longton. I'd like to address more generally about the immediate area of Hall Lane and the impact of the proposed dwellings in the area. Firstly, the proposed properties may be designed in an, entire, in an environmentally friendly way, but they are completely out of keeping with the characteristics and overall look of other properties in this, in this lane in the area. Nearby properties are mostly bungalows or red brick houses with pitched roofs and there's no comparison between the Hall Lane and Chain House Lane, which has been drawn as a comparison in one of the applications um, in, in Whitestake. 
where similar design properties have been built. Chain House Lane is a busy and arterial road with a wide variety of housing. Paul Lane is a narrow country lane with no through road. I've actually been a resident of Hall Lane for nearly 30 years now and have seen over 20 new houses being built there. In 1994, Peter Rayton applied to reinstate his chicken packaging organisation, which is now uh, Oak Gardens. And uh, we, we called a, a local petition together to try and stop this going ahead and to let him do his development of his houses. And in that, in that period of time, we even spoke to Traffic Sergeant Mike Barron at Highways, and he stated to my, to my wife and I that under no circumstances would Highways ever con countenance any further development in Hall Lane due to the nature of Hall Lane, the lacking in width of the road, the surface condition uh, and general access onto the road. He told us that it would not be considered. Now, I wonder why this has been changed in latter years. The lane is too narrow. It becomes a single track in certain areas. There is no usable footpath in a lot of the areas and uh, the hedges are overgrown. There's a serious bend near number 18 in Hall Lane. We have known of a couple of accidents there and the entrance to Meadow Head has, no, has little, little or no visibility to oncoming traffic. Admittedly, no one's been killed, but there's always, uh, there's always a possibility of happening. In 2002, United Utilities improved their treatment site at the end of Hall Lane. Residents were made promises that vehicles wouldn't travel outside of school working hour, inside of school working hours, but they did so um, from as early as five o'clock in the morning. Un United Utilities did undertake, and there is a document on file with Lancashire Government, um, that the Hall Lane would be resurfaced at their expense. I have a copy of that document but it's never been carried out. As a result, the surface is deteriorating as a result of the heavy vehicles. There are potholes, cracks, potentially dangerous things. There, there we've got an elderly neighbour who struggles with his wheelchair, or his wife's wheelchair, rather. Cars have been damaged, including ours. Potholes have been filled by the council, but nothing's ever been sorted out properly. So, uh, another concern is that the poor lighting uh, there are no pavements. Many, many people complain how difficult it is to find places uh, in the dark and uh, walking up and down is dangerous at night. We're adding more houses, as we see with this, and it's going to cause a further increase in traffic and in a potentially dangerous environment. We don't think it's suitable for further development in all lane. No consider consideration has been made for habitat by the increased housing. Uh, we used to have plenty of wildlife, bats, swallows and what have you. This year we've seen one or two, that's all. This used to be uh, considered not suitable for planning as it was greenbelt land. But whether this development is on greenbelt land or not isn't relevant. We're eroding the habitat and fl flora and fauna. Okay, Peter, that's that's your four minutes. That's four okay, minutes. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your presentation. Um, I'm, I'm sure there'll have been a, an ecology report carried out, Janice. Yeah, ecology report, it was covered in the outline, which is the actual permission, so, and there were conditions imposed on that. Yeah. Okay, thanks, John. So, um, right, we have the ward members with us this evening. Um, do you want to present together or separately? Okay, welcome, councillors Colin Coulton and councillor Julie Buttery. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> Councillor Hesketh, I will take your advice on that one. I'm, I'm presuming they'll have eight minutes, won't they? <laughs> you don't. Uh, I mean, you might have to wake us all up at the end of it, but. Um, it, <laughs> don't you, worry, I, we'll not listen, trouble you for so long. If you, if you spoke separately, Councillor Colton, you know the score. You've been here a long, long time. I have that. If you speak together if you spoke separately you'd have four minutes each if you speak together i'm going to give you eight minutes yeah. that's what you're entitled to okay, okay. off you go council colton i'm not even going to start me stopwatch 
<laughs> you don't need to do. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, as you, I'm, uh, well, both of us are councillors for this area. Uh, now, we've heard from the uh, residents who have expressed their concerns about this uh, development. And I must say, I have quite a good deal of uh, sympathy for their concerns. I don't think we can really add to what has already been said by the residents. So, I would like to urge you to reject this uh, application in its present form and ask the developer to go away and resubmit taking into account all the concerns that the residents have expressed. And I'm sure if they did that, you know, that would do him some good and uh, would make Julian himself happy, <laughs> uh, make the re residents happy. Thank you. Councillor Butcher, would you like to add anything? Yeah, just a little really, just to say that just to say that I agree with everything that Councillor Coulton and the residents have said. Um, just one thing, I've looked at, the, the property that, that we can see actually on the, is so not in keeping with the area, that it's a completely mm. different thing to what all the properties in the surrounding, completely all around Hall Lane, completely different. And if it is anything like the one on Chain House Lane, wow. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Could I just ask a question? The one on Chain House Lane, is that the the metal looking? The one that looks like a cell. Sorry? The one that looks like a cell. Yeah. yeah. I assume so. But that's not what we're that's not what we're discussing this evening. So um anyway. Thank you both for your uh, presentation. Again, ward members turning up in support of the residents. Right. Um we do have the agent with us this evening via Teams. When we join by Teams, we can't vote, can we? All right, do we have uh, Chris Betteridge with us this evening? We do, Good evening, yes. Chris. Good evening, Chris. Okay, Jason. like everyone else, you have four minutes to make your presentation, Chris. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Um, committee, um, just to speak on this ap application, just to... Confirm the site already benefits from outlined planning approval for two dwellings and therefore the principle of development for two houses on this site has already been granted. The application, as you'll be aware, seeks permission for details relating to that outline approval. The application proposes two contemporary designed houses which meet all of the council's policies in respect to privacy, overlooking and interface. The proposed eastern house is approximately 37 metres from Shoreding. The proposed western house is 36 and a half metres from Shoreding. To put this into context, the distance between Shoreden and 53 Hall Lane on the opposite south side of Hall Lane is 27 metres. The council requires 21 metres to be achieved. This is far exceeded by this application. In addition to this, more than in addition to providing more than adequate separation from the neighbouring properties, the application also proposes extensive planting at the southern ends of the proposed gardens to provide enhanced screening. It should be noted in response to concerns from neighbours, previously proposed roof terraces above the carports of each property have been removed. The proposed development does not result in overlooking, overshadowing or loss of privacy for any neighbouring properties. The development exceeds the council standards on these matters. In respect to the design of the house, the contemporary design of the houses, but there is no overriding house design on Hall Lane, with it characterised by a variety of house types, including large detached properties, bungalows, semi-detached houses, dormer bungalows, terrace cottages, barn conversions, the application proposal would add to this style and mix of properties on the lane. In any event, the proposed houses do not form part of the street scene and are not read alongside the existing properties due to their, their location on their own driveway. In terms of traffic and highway, these matters were considered at the outline stage and it was accepted that the highway can accommodate the proposed development. In respect of access, Lancashire County Council raised no objection. The access is existing and already provides access to the existing house at Danesway as well as the outbuildings and fields to the north. In terms of ecology, this was considered at the outline stage and a condition requires the approval of biodiversity enhancement measures before the works commence on site. In Greenbelt terms, the application proposal represents a reduction in volume on the site and concentrates development close to the existing built form on Hall Lane, improving the openness of the Greenbelt through the removal of buildings spread across the wider site. In terms of the, the objections that have been made this, e this evening, 
I mean, in respect to Mr and Mrs Kemp, I mean, in relation to the access, um, the access drawing is the same one that was submitted at the outline at the outline stage. So there's no there's no change in what was provided in terms of the access at that stage. And now um, the, the properties are set well away from from the boundaries and they exceed the interface distances, as I've as I've previously mm -hmm. said before. Um, the plans that were submitted at the outline stage were indicative and they were in no way intended to be the, the, the final houses that were to be proposed. Um, in relation to the property one and two, they are the same houses, hence the, the, the measurements on one is the same for the other because they're, they're identical properties. Um, the site has been subject to a full topographical survey and that formed part of the outline application and this is this has informed the application and therefore uh, you know, measures have been taken in respect to the site and, uh, and how the houses fit on it. Um, in relation to Mr Smith, a lot of the points he's raised seem to relate to to principal matters that have already been dealt with at the outline outline stage. Um, uh, yeah, and just in, in respect of four lane and chain house lane, uh, there, there are similarities in terms of the, the variety of house types that line the two roads, I think it's fair to say. Um, in conclusion, it's considered that the proposal complies with planning policy and provides a high quality development. The applicant has worked closely with planning officers to develop a scheme that officers can support. It is respectfully requested that members follow the officer recommendation and approve this application. Thank you very much. OK, Chris, um, thanks for your presentation. Um, if you'd like to stay online just while we bring this into committee, because they may or may not want to ask you any questions. So let's open this up to committee then, please. Councillor Mrs Green, let's not forget this is an outline. It's already been, it's got planning permission. It's just whether we agree with the design. OK, Councillor Mrs Green. Right, yeah. Um, obviously, I, I presume the increase in the footprint will have already come under the previous thing, will it? Because according to the residents, there's been an increase in footprint, which obviously in Greenbelt isn't very good, is it? You know, but I presume that might have been already dealt with previously. Sorry, is that question directed at me or? No. Uh, um, through you, Chair. No, that's 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 addressed to. Uh, um, sorry, Chris. Uh, Council Mrs Green didn't go through the chair. She just asked. The officer. Yeah. So I'll, I am now asking the officer, Janice, if you can answer the question, please. Yeah, the the outline application was an indicative plan. They didn't apply for any uh, of the reserve matters at that stage. It was just purely seeking the principle of development. So there was nothing agreed at that stage. Right. So the the all the details are now submitted as this reserve matters. Right. Okay. Right. So through the chair then. Um, I'm stating what the residents have said, that there's, there appears to be an increase in the footprint, which isn't allowed in Greenbelt. Um, smaller window, could it not be sort of turned around in a way where you've got the smaller windows with obscured glass facing the other properties and the bigger windows facing the other side, as the residents have requested? Um could those two things be, be dealt with under conditions? Um, and it's, it's definitely overbearing, out of keeping with the local area. It's basically because we, we used to always say it's sort of garden grabbing in a way. Before I bring in Councillor Bretherton, Janice, have you got any comments as in? the green belt and garden grabbing and etc yeah outline permission has already been granted site is previously developed in the green belt previously developed sites you're allowed to redevelop or do development on there are a number of buildings out buildings which i mentioned in me um, presentation that are being demolished so the volume of buildings to be removed is that actually slightly more than what is being uh, with which is 
of the new dwellings. So I put in a, an update sheet the other day, which you'll have seen, that explains that. Um, overbearing, it, it meets our spatial separation distances to, to stop that. So all our tried and tested distances it meets them, it exceeds those. So we can't really class it as overbearing. Um, garden grabbing, it's not a garden, it's a previously developed site. It's quite a big site and there's quite a lot of the land to the, I think it's to the north of the proposed development area, which is going to be returned to Greenbelt. So you can't really class it as garden grabbing. Thank you, Chair. Well, <clears throat> okay, thanks uh, for that, Janice. Councillor Bretherton. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I've listened to the uh, concerns of the residents uh, nearby, and there's obviously uh, some concern uh, with this development. Uh, my main concern was a comment made by one of the residents about the overlooking, and despite the spatial distancing requirements, I think we need to be mindful that um, if, if this development is going to have a, a, a huge window, a bedroom window, uh, overlooking somebody's house and, and privacy, it, it can be, it can have a detrimental effect. And we've, I think we need to take that into consideration. I'd be uh, looking, I'd be wanting to see uh, some condition on the overlooking aspect uh, with the window. I think I'd prefer to, to if, if possible, if we can have some kind of condition where we have a normal size window uh, rather than a, a, a huge window, because I, I think that lo longer term could have a detrimental effect on the on the neighbours. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Council Bretherton. Just bear with me a second, Council Green. Um, Chris. Uh, just a quick question before I bring in Councillor Mrs Green and I think Janice might want to add something and then I'll bring in Councillor Adams so after this it's Councillor Mrs Green, Janice, then Councillor Adams would the applicant be agreeable to normal size windows or not? Um, they, they, they may well be, I'd, I'd need to put the question to them I think, I think it would be useful um, to show a picture of that rear elevation just to show what the windows are that are um, that are proposed, because they're just um, standard Juliet balcony windows that, that would be the same size as standard windows, just extended to the the ground floor, if you like. Um, the the main the, the the large windows are on the northern elevation, so the southern elevation is the one that faces the neighbouring gardens, and they're not. I wouldn't classify those as significantly large larger windows than you would ordinarily have. It's certainly a question I can ask, but I think there's. I'd be concerned there's some confusion over which windows are actually facing those those properties. Um, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure they could be reduced to regular size windows if that was the committee's wish. But um, yeah, I, I, I could certainly pose the question to to the applicants. Okay, thanks thanks for that, Chris. So are you happy with that, Council Bretherton? Yes, I'd I'd much prefer to see. Um, uh, reduced size, normal size windows. Um, I know what Juliet uh, windows are like, and they are larger. And um, it, it's a it's a privacy issue for the for the neighbours. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Bretherton. I presume you have one of these windows at your property. Yes, I do. Councillor Mrs Green. Yeah, I don't want to labour this point through the chair, but one of the residents did suggest having the windows move swapped about so the windows are looking onto the agricultural buildings instead of into their house uh, which would lend itself to privacy and the effects of overbearing even if it's near not near um you wouldn't get that sense of people looking into your property the same and and i still hold that these houses aren't in keeping with the surrounding area they're not in keeping whatsoever. If the bungalows and brick buildings were pitch roof, it's they're not in keeping with the local area. So I, I would be tending to lean towards refusal. Is that a proposal? Yes, yes, Chair. Okay, thanks, Council Mrs Green. Um, Janice, did you want to come back on anything? Yeah, just to reiterate that 
normally we'd require 21 metres between facing windows to prevent overlooking. The distance this proposal is from the rear windows of um, Shoreline is it's about 34 and a half metres. So it's well in excess of what we'd normally ask for. And obviously we're, we're considering the application on its merits as it's put before us. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks, Janice. Um, Councillor Adams. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't have any of these windows, just to clarify, so um, I'm not sure what they're like. So I'll take um, people's word for it. But on a, on a more serious note, I think Chris mentioned that um, the applicants and the agent have worked extensively uh, with officers, um, but there was a glaring um, someone missing in that, and that's residents. Um, I always take a lot of heed from uh, local members who come and address the committee, and I thank them for coming. They know the, the area certainly better than me, um, and obviously the residents who spoke as well. I think there's a few... there's. There's, there's quite a lot in this which is positive, I think, and I think, as uh, residents have said, there are aspects of this that they agree with. Um, I think working in collaboration with officers and the residents, I do think that there is a way forward here which can have a positive impact uh, on everyone concerned. Um, and on the back of that, I think I would actually propose deferral chair to allow that to happen. Um, I do have some sympathy in terms of whether these buildings actually um, are in character with the area. Um, for me, they, they don't seem to be. Um, but again, I think I think if the applicant and the agent um, works with the residents, and we've seen from a, uh, an earlier uh, application to um, agenda item tonight how that works, I would like to see that happening again uh, moving forward for this one. So um, I think I, I do support it on, on, on the whole, but there are, I do think there are some things that could be worked on with residents and the applicants, and I'd like to see that. So I will propose deferral, Chair. Thank you. OK, thanks, Councillor Adams. With you not knowing the area, I presume you've never played cricket at New Longton Cricket Club. You'd be happy to know, Chair, that I've actually scored some winning runs at New Longton Cricket Club as well. Thank you. So you do know the you know Chain House Lane, and you know the diversity of the buildings there, yeah. You could use your microphone, Councillor Adams. Okay, Councillor Watson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I was about to say much a similar thing as to what uh, Councillor Adams has just said. To be honest, so uh, rather than taking up a great deal of time, uh, my from from what I've heard, obviously the the windows seems to be the uh, the most reasonable issue that we can deal with. As most of the other issues, unfortunately, I don't think we would be able to refuse on, uh, or at least a challenge would um, uh, it would be very easy on any of the other issues that have been raised. Um, so, assuming, but uh, I'd, I'd like to second deferral uh, with particularly with the caveat of uh, looking at reducing the size of the windows or at least changing the orientation, even if the size is technically similar um, uh, for for the uh, privacy of the neighbours. Um, but yeah, otherwise just to have quick discussions with those neighbours to see if anything else can be done to help. Uh, that's all for now. Thank you. OK, thanks, uh, Councillor Watson. Um, Councillor Moon. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I will repeat it. <laughs> I'm not as um, polite as yourself, Councillor, because I will repeat what's previously been said. Um, I, 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 there's not a lot, I don't think there's a lot of positives for me in this application. I accept that it's got the outline permission, so the principle of putting two houses there is there. But beyond that, I don't see any evidence whatsoever of an application that has in any way, shape or form tried to bring something forward that is in keeping with the area, is respectful of what's already there, is respectful of other residents that are already living there. We've got houses going behind bungalows and I accept there's an outline permission for two houses, but you've, there's clearly space available to do this in a way that is sensitive to what's going on around and it's never comfortable as a councillor to have an officer's report in front of you and read it and think, 
I just disagree, but I do. And a lot of this for me is subjective. Statements like will not look out of place in the mixed character of Hall Lane is a subjective position. I think they will stand out like a sore thumb. I think they'll be as in keeping as the modern, I think personally, monstrosity on Longmoss Lane next to some very traditional cottages. I don't see how contemporary design, flat roof, carport, Juliet windows, in Hall Lane works. Uh, uh, how? That just is not going to work for me. I don't agree that it's in keeping at all. I do think it will have a detrimental impact on the people that are living there. I accept your spatial distances, but spatial distances or not, when you're in a bungalow and you're looking at a contemporary flat roofed uh, significant volume property, two of them together, not scattered buildings across a semi-agricultural site. We're now looking at a massing of two dwellings. I'm sorry, it's really not working for me. Now, whether we go deferral, and I support deferral, um, there's a conversation, a de decent conversation and some significant changes, or we go refusal is is a puzzler for me. Um, I have to say, Chair, as well, I think the gentleman was saying about the access and the hedge. And I think if you have an application like this and you have the opportunity to put in the entranceway with a metre space so someone can try and safely cut their hedge, why wouldn't you want to? Why wouldn't you want to? Why would you want to go straight down? You know, I just think it, I'm all for we have to follow the policy and the planning law and all that. But there's common sense and decency in here somewhere. And I think. Just because a planning policy says you can do that, if you could do something else within the site that works for everybody, why wouldn't you want to? Um, Chair, I'll wait and see what other committee members say in terms of refusal and deferment. I could probably second either, but I'd just like to know what the general feeling is. I've had a seconder for deferral, so if you'd like to second refusal, you're quite welcome to. Through you, Chair, is there any other committee members want to speak before I make that decision? There is, yes. All right, should we do that then? Yes, and uh, as for the entrance um, that you just mentioned, highways have no objections. They're really helping us out again. And our, our county councillor isn't here to help us, so... Councillor Hesketh. Thank you, Mr Chairman. When I came here this evening, I was going to support this application. And I still do, other than the comments in connection with the windows and so forth. And if something could be done with that, and probably would be if it went for deferral, um, I think that I would go along with that. I think that it would uh, enhance the site and tidy it up compared with what it is at the moment. It would contact it more and make it more in uh, in keeping with the area. And as far as houses, types of houses are concerned, there's one or two at the end of that road that I will be glad to have in my back garden. So <laughs> I'll leave it with that, Mr Chairman, deferral. Thank you, I'll Councillor Hesketh, for telling us all how big your back garden is. <laughs> <laughs> right, do I have a seconder the councillor, Mrs Green's, move to refuse. Councillor Moon. Chair, I'm going to be happy to support deferral as long as we're deferring with a very clear, as we've done previously, because I know I have the option. If this comes back and there's been no respect shown for the committee, no respect shown for the residents, then we've got options to move for other uh proposals but I would I think it's probably fair and right to give the applicants the opportunity to hear what the residents have to say hear what we have to say and try again so like the last one we we, we, we would be deferring to invite the applicant and his agent to liaise with the planning officers the residents of the area the ward councillors come to an agreeable because it's got outlined planning permission and it will always be there. So that is what, right, okay. So we've had um, a proposal for refusal from Councillor Mrs Green. Do I have a seconder? Okay, so that amendment has fallen.
we have now had a proposal for deferral from Councillor Adams. It has been seconded by Councillor Watson. Do I have a proposal for approval? It's very quiet. Councillor Hancock. Sorry? What approval? A deferral? Oh, okay. So we have an approval... Uh, Right. The officer's recommendation is approval with conditions. Yeah. Okay, we we'll, we heard the presentation, we heard the residents. Councillor Mrs. Green proposed refusal and she hasn't got a seconder. Councillor Adams proposed deferral, which was seconded by Councillor Watson. And have you just I you approve the deferral? Gosh, it's confusing me. Right. Um, so what we are going to do is go to the electronic vote for deferral, um, hoping that the agent and the applicant and the planning officers, the residents and the ward members can get together and come up with an acceptable design. Are we all happy with that? We're voting for, to defer the application. Okay, Tass. Thank you, Chair. So committee has decided to defer the matter to allow for discussions between the applicant, ward members and residents, um, along with planning officers, to deal with the issues raised tonight. Thank you, Chair. OK, if you were here just for that application, if you would like to leave, thank you for attending and I hope it um, comes to a satisfactory conclusion for you all. OK. Moving on to item number 10 this evening, M Middleforth Hall Farm, Factory Lane, Penwitham, um, and Janice, if you would like to present this item, please. Right. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Yates, you can come back in now. Uh, Right, welcome back, Councillor Yates. OK, moving on to agenda item 10, Middleforth Hall Farm, Factory Lane, Penwitham. Um, and I'd like to invite Janice Crook to present this item, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. So the application and associated listed building consent application relates to the farm buildings associated with Middleforth Hall Farm. The farmhouse is a listed building and the outbuildings are listed by association as curtilage buildings. So the site is located on Factory Lane in the existing built-up area of Penwitham. So this aerial view shows the site in the context of surrounding land uses. There's just one residential property opposite and then the Ver Vernon Carras Sports Club lies to the northeast. Land to the south 
safeguarded for future development. So this photograph just shows the listed building, Middleforth Hall Farmhouse. And then to the east of the farmhouse is a large brick built barn. Um, this is the rear of the large barn and there's a smaller barn right behind it. So that photograph just shows the smaller one in context of the larger one. So the application proposes the demolition of the small existing barn and the, and the majority of the larger barn and rebuilding on a new fo footings together with two storey extensions to the front and another to link the two rebuilt barns um, to form a single detached dwelling. The proposal includes associated landscaping and external works, including the formation of a new access to the eastern side. So the areas edged red denote the area of the existing barns. <clears throat> so since first submission the access has been amended to provide a two metre wide footpath along factory lane to the front of the dwelling in line with LCC requirements so the next three images have been provided by the agent just to demonstrate how the proposed dwelling will appear in relation to the listed farmhouse building so this is looking from further along factory lane and then this one's just an aerial view showing that the white building there is the, the listed farmhouse. And then there's another aerial view here. Um, so the main issue with this proposal is the impact on the setting of the listed building. And Growth Lancashire, who are the council's advisors on heritage matters, consider that the proposal will cause moderate less than substantial harm to the significance of Middleforth Farm and would therefore be at odds with Chapter 16 of the National Planning Policy Framework and Policy 16 in our own Lancashire core strategy. However, they, they advise that if the local planning authority consider that the benefits of the proposal outweigh the level of harm and do grant permission, then they will require a number of conditions to be imposed. Now, since compiling the committee report, both Lancashire County Council Highways and United Utilities have responded. Uh, highways are happy with the addition of the two metre footpath and have no objections. And United Utilities have no objections, but both require conditions be imposed should permission be granted. But Due to the harm found to the listed building and its setting, it is recommended that the application be refused and that listed building consent is not granted. Thank you, Chair. Well, uh, OK, thanks for your presentation, Janice. Uh, we don't have any registered speakers. You've not registered, have you? You have? Yeah, I mean... No reg registered speakers, as in objectors of people. And are you the are you the agent? Yeah. So we have got the agent with us. Okay. So if you'd like to come and speak, because there's nobody else. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. If, if you'd like to just explain what you're going to do for the committee and then we can uh, move on. Stand as the agent and the, uh, the planning officer that the, the crux of this case is about the impact on the listed building. So in order to best explain that, I've got a, uh, a presentation which allows members of the committee to view the proposals in the context of recent consents in relation to the listed building from any vantage point. So I'm hopefully trying to work with the case officer, the, the applicant and the current listed building owner to try and demonstrate in a way that this application 
in many ways overcomes the concerns that Growth Lancashire have. So if I share my screen as well, um, I should be able to... There we go. So I'll have a look around that in a minute. But first off, um, good evening, Chair and members. My name is Chris Homer and I'm the agent for the application. Uh, I'd like to start off by going into a bit more detail at the salient points that raised by Janice. Um, so the site has been previously approved for six dwellings uh, and the description on that application was the erection of six dwellings following partial demolition and conversion of the existing agricultural buildings and barns and the formation of a new access. Um, as part of that application, no structural survey was submitted as part of the application and therefore the level of demolition deemed acceptable was never formally established. Um, the conditions that went along with that approval required uh, that works commence within three years, which they have, and condition three was for a construction phase management plan. And um, that was submitted and approved and contained within it the requirement for a structural survey. This was done by the applicant, um, and the conclusion of that was that the existing barn was in a poor state of repair, bordering on being structurally unstable, and the recommendation was that the front, rear, gable and internal dividing walls were all to be taken down and rebuilt off new foundations. That doesn't leave a lot of the existing barn left standing. Um, so, uh, uh, that was that. So, the queries that came from Growth Lancashire, the main source of the concern, and I think from discussions with Janice, the reasons for the refusal was the the objection from Growth Lancashire. Uh, they objected really to the established to the, the, the demolition of the building or the extent of the demolition of the building, which we think is commensurate with the previous application. Um, they also said that I, they didn't take into account for me the, the previous six dwelling approval, because on that there were uh, 13 open car parking spaces, which I think is more impactful than the three that are proposed under the current application. There were 19 bedrooms across six properties, so 38 bed spaces altogether. There was 650 square metres of proposed hard standing, which service, which was the access road that serviced the properties, which we've got none, um, let alone the six sets of trampolines, washing lines and bin stores that I feel, as the applicant, have a, a more significant detrimental impact on the impact of the listed building. Um, with regards to the footprints, um, I think it's worth noting that the existing barns on site have a footprint of 970 square metres. The previous application was, six, was uh, the previous approval was for 636 metres squared, and the current the current application is for 622 metres squared as a footprint. So, overall, we are lower than the existing buildings and lower than the previously approved. Um, the same is true of the separation distances. The previous approval was for seven point. 5.7 metres of separation distance at the closest point between the listed building and the new barn, whereas we're close to seven metres by virtue of a, of increasing that distance. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just jump on this as a proposal because this is, um by the way, this is heading down factory lane and this is the tunnel underneath the West Coast main line. And we have the ability to come down the road um, and on the left hand side, on, sorry, on the right hand side, we have the previously approved agricultural sheds. Um, they were approved in 2021, last year. So as we round the corner, uh, we can begin to see the aspect of the listed property uh, and its relationship to the barn itself. So as we come round, I think the key points for me were the separation distance. So again, I'm no tree expert, um, but they are the right size and shape of trees. They're meant to be the right species. Um, but there's the existing frontage of the bar of the listed building and I've added a bit more context um, from site photographs taken and we can see the level of separation and if we go up slightly in a slightly aerial view the proposed boundary line as shown there is the line of the existing of, of the current barn and we're proposing to move the barn the new design further away to allow for access around all four sides of the property um, just picking up on a couple of points from the previous applications um, Councillor Adams, you mentioned working with a neighbour. Gary Hargreaves, Mr Hargreaves is a current farmer and the custodian of the listed building. He has been in, we've been in constant dialogue with him and we actually have a letter of support from him, which mentions the fact that, you know, his preference would be for a, a single detached family dwelling as opposed to 
six families living next to them, um, certainly from an impact. Um, and then, yeah, I'm hopeful that that's uh, let's go down a bit. Um, yeah, I'm hopeful that the uh, the 3D model, which I think is the first time that you may have seen something like this, again, uh, there's discussions with Janice about, we talked through this model and she said that it might be useful to you to have a look around. So please, by all means, if there's any other vantage points, then after five minutes. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm done. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks for your presentation, Chris. Okay, I will swiftly move this application into committee. Councillor Bretherton, Councillor Moon. Thank you, Chair. Um, to me, this is like a common sense um, issue in that everything that's been said seems to uh, be in favour to approve this application. Uh, I, I live in the Oh, I'm the councillor for the neighbouring ward, Walt Sunnydale West, and I've lived there 30 years. I've seen similar barns completely demolished uh, in the past, and in space of the barns that have been demolished, they've had new modern estates built. This proposal is actually looking to um, reduce the current curtilage of, the, uh, of an old dilapidated barn, which will have to be demolished anyway. Um, it would be nice to see the original bricks used, uh, for example, if we can use them, the, maybe the handmade bricks, if they can be reused, it'll still have the same character. The previous application was for six dwellings, 13 open car parking spaces. That would significantly increase the traffic uh, down that, that road. What's being proposed is one dwelling. So where we had approval for six, we're actually reducing that to one dwelling, less uh, cars down there. And I've noticed there's no objections, no neighbours of no no reason, no neighbours have objected. In fact, we've had a neighbour that's actually for it. So to me, um, a dilapidated barn, it, it, it's pointless trying to. Um, trying to make anything of it, a dilapidated barn needs to needs to come down and built more efficiently, up to up to a high standard, uh, modern materials, well insulated. That's the option that 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 should be done. You should never try and keep an old barn. In terms of um, the way it looks uh, from from what's. I'm looking at that, it's going to be a massive improvement. I cycle down there and I actually see the dilapidated buildings and it does look an eyesore. This proposal would actually improve the area uh, in, in my respect. So this is where, in my mind, this is where uh, common sense comes into play uh, and we'll be improving the environment. There'll be less impact with cars and traffic down there because there'll be less, uh, there'll be one house instead of six. And I just feel that um, we we should uh, approve it, and I, I propose that we approve it. Thank you. Councillor Moon. Um, thanks, Chair. Um, I'll start by saying I would be happy to second that approval. When I first saw this, I must be honest, I thought, oh, oh no. Um, but then the more you read into it, you think, some of the elements you'd want to sort of save in inverted commas, the kind of the ship sailed, you know, some of the stuff's kind of gone. I think what Council Brotherson said around bricks and things, anything that you can obviously save heritage wise, you would, well, I would think you would want to and do what you can with that. But I don't really have a big problem with this application at all. I, I think the impact is less <laughs> significant than what's previously been proposed. I think the, presentation was so helpful could we have you like every planning committee for every application just take take us on a little uh, wander through seeing the gap you know when we saw it on the picture I thought oh it looks really close to house and then seeing 
you put the overlay on of where the existing is to me that was really helpful because that was one of my worries I thought it just looks like it's encroaching and it's actually not it's further the other way so yeah personally chair I'm I'm all right with this and I would be happy to second the approval okay thanks councillor um councillor Adams thank you chair um yeah, somewhat as this um, application falls within my award, um, I've spent most of my life um, in this area, um, and I may be slightly biased, but I do actually think it's probably the nicest area in South Ribble. Um, in terms of, you, you know, it does feel like you're, you're out you're in the middle of nowhere uh, and you're only 10 minutes from Preston City Centre, um, and, you know, you, you're close to... Uh, the River Ribble uh, and all the other beautiful parts um, of our borough uh, as well as neighbouring ones so I can see why um, the applicant and the owner uh, want to live here so my concerns are you know on on the back of that and if if the agent wouldn't mind moving the so we can see the front of the property um, my concern is it, it it looks in terms of the height of the building fairly significant I just wonder, in comparison to the current uh, barn, do we have we got any measurements in terms of, or if the officers could potentially answer that? Um, I agree with Councillor Brotherton and uh, Councillor Moon in terms of um, the support for it, but I do have concerns in terms of um, you know the listed building aspect of it. And although Councillor Brotherton says it's uh, the current structure there. Um, is looking very reary, should we say? Um, it is also quite significant to that area and that community. So, I do think there's a little bit of work to do there. So, can you confirm the height of the the, um, the building in comparison to what's there now? Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. The height is what? Okay, carry on, Councillor Adams. Um, yeah, so I mean, could, could we move it up? Is that all right? So I can see the front of yeah. it. No, I just so I can see it. So, so. He just wants you to do some work. Okay. Um, yeah. No, I think I think I could be minded to um, support my colleagues, Councillor Bradson and Moon, in approving this. Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll just have a little bit more of a think on it, on it, Chair. But um, but yeah, thank you for that. Very animated tonight, Councillor Adams. Cricket. I have actually scored quite a lot of cricket runs around down there as well. So, um, um, but no, I, I, no, seriously, I think I think it's a, it's a, it's a very um, positive application. I think there's a lot a lot of benefits there. I think the agents already stated um, working with uh, local farmer Hargreaves on that, and he's obviously stated his support, which I think is significant because um, he doesn't support a lot of things. So. Um, <laughs> So I'm, mind, I'm minded to uh, support my colleagues in, a, in approving this. Thank you. OK, thanks, Councillor Adams. I'll just correct you. Bamber Bridge is the place to be. That's where the action is, not Ben Mother. Uh, we've got Councillor Lomax, Councillor Watson. I like it. It isn't trying to tie in with the house next door, the, the listed building. It is something completely different. And I, I think that works better, mm. um, personally. Um, uh, and, you know, that's the way it should be. We, we should have uh, a, a mix next to something as old and as listed. As for use of the existing bricks, yes, I would certainly go with that because that would take more into the landscape. But actually look at it from here, I think it looks excellent to be honest um so i would go with proposal councillor watson thank you chair um 
the issue for me really is that we do have a listed building there and i do believe this is detrimental to that listed building in that we're we're, we're removing the significance almost of it it's, it's pretty much um a barn obviously fits with that style and age of building a large modern property like this does not in my opinion um that's not to say that this building isn't beautiful in and of itself because it clearly is but i just i think it diminishes a listed building and sets a poor precedent if a similar situation were to happen again we might be tying ourselves up a bit here it's a bit like the green belt issues uh, so we end up with giving permission in one area and then does that a set precedent going forward and uh, we, we're in we're in trouble again um I, again I, I just i can only see this as as diminishing the um the existed grade two listed uh building that's there i mean i'm an artist by trade and it's a similar thing to actually with chain house lane where we've got uh, the the unusual house that most people don't like i actually do quite like because i think it makes the area pop a bit because it's a slight contrast in the middle this isn't a contrast this is an overshadowing of um a historic building so i'm afraid i'm gonna have to be the grinch before christmas and propose refusal on this one okay so that's a proposal for refusal from councillor Watson, just bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting paranoid with this young lady up next to me. She didn't actually say anything. Councillor Mrs. Green. I just want to say I reiterate everything that uh, Councillor Watson said, and I'll second refusal. Okay, so have we have we any other proposals apart from approval and refusal? Okay, so we had um, a proposal, Councillor Bretherton, for approval, which was seconded by Councillor Moon, and we've also had a proposal for refusal from Councillor Watson, seconded by Councillor Mrs Green. We will vote on the amendment first. So for refusal, nobody else has anything to say, have they? No? Right, so we're going to a vote now to refuse the application because that's the amendment. Pardon? Oh, I don't know, do I? <laughs> right, th we're going to vote on refusal. Whether it's substantive or not, we're going to vote on refusal. Okay. Thank you. So, anyone wishing to refuse the application? And I've got to say, before we do go to the vote, that visual changed my mind. But there you go. Um, so, this is for refusal. All right, Council Moon, are you happy? So, this is for refusal. Okay, Taz, if you let us know the outcome of that. Thank you, Chair. So that proposal has actually been um, not followed. So we now go to the um, proposal for approval. Um, and in respect of that, because there are no actual conditions attached, um, I would suggest that members uh, vote to mind, mind to approve planning permission and it's delegated to the Director of Planning Consultation with Chair and Vice Chair to deal with the conditions. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is for approval. Okay, Chaz, if you can give us the results of that one. Thank you, Chair. So, um, committee has decided or has decided or minded to approve planning permission um, and delegate the um, matter to the Director of Planning Consultation with Chair and Vice Chair to deal with conditions. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks for that, Taz. All right, moving on to 
Item 11, Middleford Hall Farm, again, Factory Lane, Penwitham. Uh, listed building consent. Janice, if you'd like to present this item. It's the same item. I haven't prepared a separate um, presentation. All right, so uh, uh, do we take it that the vote is exactly the same or do we have to have a proposal again? Through you, Chair. Um, as this is relating to a consent um, for listed building, we, um, it will have to be proposed and seconded again and it, there will have to be a vote. Okay, so do I have a proposal for refusal? Councillor, who wants to propose and who wants to second? Come on, let's move it on. You, Councillor Mrs Green, you wish to second it, do you? So, Councillor Watson, you're proposing refusal. Just for just for clarity, can we just explain that a bit more? Officer, would you like to explain? More clarity, obviously. The planning application you've just voted on, this is for the listed building consent because it's a listed building. Consent's different from planning, so you need to vote again. I'm, I haven't prepared a separate presentation because essentially it's the same development. It's just that now you're looking at the listed building consent rather than the planning Does that make it clear? Uh, Councillor Bretherton, or is it as clear as mud? I'll consent to do the works, yeah. Sorry. Are you going to pr propose or not? You proposed approval on number 10, now yeah, you're going consent to... Consent to do the works, yeah. Sorry? Yes, approval. Yes. approval. Right, so you're proposing approval. approval. Councillor Mrs Green. Chair, could I just have clarification of that? I'm just a bit confused. Is it consent to keep the, the farmhouse listed? No. Or, or what is it? I'm confused. Sorry, Sorry Chair. List, to do any works to a listed building mm -hmm. or Kirkland, you also have to have listed building consent. That gives a consent to do those works. So in the case of this, this is giving consent to do to the development that you've just to have the up. farmhouse demolished it. No, not the farmhouse. No, no, the, the, no, building. Building. the barns. The barns. The barns. Yeah. 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 You would but be the giving... listed part you would give, be giving consent to have the removed to have the because new they're listed as curtilage buildings. Yeah. You need to get listed building consent to do any works to yeah. them. Yeah. And in this case, you'll be giving consent to demolish those listed so buildings. So that you could have the new development built. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. I'm just clarifying. Are you sure it has? Are you sure? Right. Are you enjoying this, folks? Mm. Neither am I. Right, so, right, come on, let's start again on this one. Do we have a pro, do I have a proposal for refusal? Councillor Watson and seconded by Councillor Green. Do I have a proposal for approval? Councillor Bretherton, do I have a seconder? Councillor Council Moon and Councillor Adams. Councillor Moon, so we're going to take for approval first on this time, unless anybody wants a deferral. Oh. Right, okay, so this is for approval. Okay, Taz, if you can give us the outcome of that vote. Thank you, Chair. So, committee has decided to approve listed building consent for the conversion of existing barns together with extension, new building and demolition works to form and attach to existing <coughs> dwelling associated to landscaping. Thank you, Chair. Okay, that concludes this evening's planning committee. Thank you very much for all attending. I hope we've kept you entertained. All right. I'm glad it's not seven o'clock on Saturday because you wouldn't be here. All right.